Hello everyone, welcome to Screencast ID SC10061. In this screencast, we are going to be creating a captive portal policy with one of the internal parameters set to internal. The prerequisite for this uh, captive portal policy is going to be SC10041, wherein we created a AAA policy uh, for an onboard radius server. So let's get started. Before we go ahead and configure the captive portal policy, let us see how many different options do we have. The first option is centralized. In this case, the captive portal policy is enforced at one single controller. This controller could reside in the DMZ or in the corporate. As seen in the diagram, uh, in our case, the captive portal policy resides in this particular green controller sitting in the DMZ. What that essentially means is uh, before the client is authenticated onto the network, all its packets are tunneled to this controller and this controller then redirects the, uh, the client to the right URL wherein it can provide its credentials and get authenticated. The second option we have is centralized controller. In this option, the AP tunnels all the client or the unauthenticated client packets to its own controller on which it's adopted. So as you can see in this example, all the blue APs will tunnel all the traffic uh, to their respective blue controllers, which would then enforce the policy. And the same applies with the brown APs. Our third option is internal. In this case, the captive portal policy resides at the edge, in this case, the APs. The captive portal policy will always reside at the location where the wireless LAN is serviced. In most cases, this is going to be the AP 731 since uh, they have the radios. The only exception would be the RFS uh, 4011, which has built-in radios and can service wireless LANs. To simplify our network, uh, in today's screencast, we are going to be creating an internal captive portal policy. This will basically be enforced at the AP itself. Uh, in our diagram, what we have here, or in our topology, what we have here is an RFS controller, which has two VLANs, VLAN 1 and VLAN 5. VLAN 1 is the management VLAN, and VLAN 5 is the guest access VLAN. Once the client associates to the AP, it gets an IP address on VLAN 5, which means that VLAN 5 is extended back to the AP. The AP has an IP address on uh, on VLAN 3, which is uh, 192.168.3.110. All the captive portal policies are enforced on the AP itself. Um, once the client is authenticated, the packets are then tunneled back to the controller, and the controller routes or bridges the packets accordingly. Let's log into our switch and create a captive portal policy. Uh, to create a captive portal policy, we will navigate to uh, configuration and then to services. Uh, as you can see right now, there are no policies defined here. So let's click on add. Let's uh, give our policy name. Let's just call it internal to signify that we are going to be using the internal option. Uh, as discussed before, there are three options, the internal, centralized, and centralized controller. Uh, in today's screencast, we're just going to choose internal. The AAA policy we want to choose is uh, going to be internal as well. This was created in uh, Screencast SC10041, where we have an onboard radius server running on the controller itself. Let's click OK, and let's uh, commit and save our changes. Let's exit out of here. As you can see, we have created our uh, captive portal policy. It's called internal, um, and we are using the AAA policy called internal as well. You can download the configuration file for this screencast at the link shown on the screen. Thank you for watching.